Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Pratik. Uh, I work at Mapbox Bangalore office. Uh, this is my first hot summit, so I'm really excited to see all of you. Uh, uh, I've been part of a few of the hot tasks and a few of the engagement of Mapbox with uh, hot. Uh, so I'm just going to share uh, the experience that I had, uh, a few of the works that we have been doing, uh, especially around imagery uh, and Mapbox commitment towards hot. Uh, Uh, so those of you who don't know, uh, Mapbox uh, provides mapping services and we have been engaged with HOT uh, for quite a lot of time, uh, mainly because we have like a good connection with many of the folks who have been part of, uh, who have been part of HOT from the beginning. Uh, at the same time, like HOT does some amazing work and uh, around Mapbox and uh, we always like try to help them out uh, as much as we can do. Uh, so that's kind of like our main goal uh, behind every like every engagement that we have, and during this this whole course, we have realized that uh, it's good to have a formal engagement. Uh, so we developed a, a, an official uh, protocol for us uh, that gives us a, a heads up and gives us more flexibility and a, a better guidance towards how we are going to engage with the stuff that Hot does. Uh, so, Mapbox commitment towards HOT uh, targets three things. Uh, the first one is helping with the activation, uh, coordination with the with the ground team. Uh, the good thing is that we have like folks around the globe, so that can be like a 24-hour cycle. Uh, we help in uh, doing the remote mapping work, uh, the validation, improving the documents, uh, and must and as much as we can do uh, from around the globe. Uh, in through our office. And the third thing is like helping coordinating the, the imaging needs that HOT has, uh, because that is one of the major thing that, that comes up uh, at, that comes up as a resource uh, when you are talking about like uh, remote mapping. Uh, I know that sometimes like it goes a bit towards not the ideology of open street map that a local mapper should have like been mapping stuff. Uh, but in the needs of a disaster response, uh, imagery is one of the main source that we are dependent upon. Uh, so that's why, like, that is one of the major focus that we have in recent years uh, to provide imagery as well as possible, uh, as soon as possible, as recent as possible. Uh, this is our team editing the whole world. Uh, of course, you can see like places like U.S., Europe, uh, uh, Japan, where people will be seeing our maps. So these are where like people are actually like. Uh, using our maps, uh, but some some things strange is like here. Uh, this is Afghanistan. Uh, you can see Nepal, uh, and also you can see somewhere in Mexico. Uh, these are some of the places where we have engaged with HOT in some of the mapping activities. Uh, and specifically, my favorite is uh, Afghanistan because that is the best example of our engagement with HOT. Uh, we have helped them. We have helped from our side to help coordinate with the ground teams. Uh, we have tried our best to uh, contribute to the to the mapping side, uh, adding roads, uh, adding <coughs> residential areas, uh, adding the re residential areas, uh, and third, like providing imagery because uh, these are the parts of the world where you don't find uh, coverage of normal imagery providers. Uh, so we went ahead, uh, we had folks in Digital Globe that helped us a lot uh, while this image purchases. So this is one of the best examples that I can like think about where we have, where we coordinated with HOT. Uh, another one is uh, Mexico uh, during the, the, uh, the cyclone uh, where we helped uh, put forward the imagery, uh, the recent one, uh, because the imagery that was already there on our map and Bing was not good enough uh, to add details like buildings, uh, which, were import, uh, which were important at that time. Uh, we also help mapping at the same time validation uh, because we feel that that is one of the major thing that comes up uh, because there's a lot of time when there are people who are new to OpenStreetMap who are contributing here and it, it, it's always better to have like the data quality like as high as possible. Uh, so, our, so our team engaged with uh, adding uh, and validating the data. Uh, this is a GIF, if you can see, uh, it's how the contribution went. Uh, 
not only us, but the whole team, uh, the, all the, the, the users who have been uh, adding the data in uh, Mexico. Uh, during all these things, we follow certain processes, we learn from them, and we try to improve them. Uh, we, have, we have realized that it's all, the importance of documentation is like very important, since this is the time when you are coordinating with the global team. Uh, there will be many people from different parts of the world. There will, there will be many people who will be joining this for the first time. Uh, some of them would want to help, but they don't know what to do, what to add. Uh, some of them really want to help, but they don't just right. understand the language. Uh, and we try to target all these issues. Uh, we follow certain procedures in our chain set that links to a certain ticket uh, that we try to make sure ha captures everything. Uh, the detail of why we are doing this, the detail of where we are doing this, what tools are there, what documentations we can provide, how you can do things much better, how you can ask for help, uh, what are the communications going on right now. Uh, we just target, the, the, the target is to like have a consistency so that even a new person who doesn't know about HOT, who doesn't know about OpenStreetMap, but when he sees some tweet, some random tweet that people are contributing here, can just come up, see the documentation, and just start contributing to that. Uh, so we do spend a lot of time in that. Uh, sorry. Uh, these are the tickets. Uh, we have an open sure repo uh, in GitHub where we try to figure out uh, and like uh, maintain these things. Uh, we have been part of many of the recent uh, hot activations. Uh, we specifically try to focus at places where we can help directly and there's not an engagement or kind of like a big priority. Uh, the engagement depends upon what kind of needs are there. Uh, if, there's a, if, there's, uh, if there's a community which is already very strong, which is already full of good mappers, uh, but the only thing that they need is providing them imagery, then we jump from that side. Uh, if, there's, if there's a place where there's a missing uh, involvement of the community and uh, uh, the need of like mappers to map the roads or like it's uh, very urgent, then we jump as a team to map these roads uh, or these buildings or these features, whatever is required. Uh, if there's a need to validate or like add translations uh, or add documentations, uh, we help them. So based upon the case by case, uh, we change and we we like make ourselves a little bit flexible on this engagement. Uh, we have a presence around the globe, and that's something of a very good point that help us to coordinate around the uh, around with like different team around different time zones. Uh, so once like someone the team is the team is sleeping here, like someone from here will be able to respond, someone will be able to uh, do the work that has been needed to be done. Uh, we have folks around, we have like about like 50 folks who work specifically around OpenStreetMap and data, uh, and half of them are always like awake uh, around the daytime. So you'll always find someone like who will be able to respond, who will be able to uh, help them. Uh, other than that, we have a lot of folks uh, who work uh, remotely, and that gives us the advantage to translate stuff uh, so that like the instructions and uh, things are available in the local language where the task is happening. At the same time, if a community wants to jump in, like uh, we can provide the, uh, the documentation on that side. Uh, from our learning, from our internal learning, we try to uh, improve as much as possible around OS, hot OSM also. Uh, we have learned that it's much better if you have some kind of templates for uh, image requests internally. Uh, so we maintain a template internally inside, and we thought like that, that that would be a good idea to help that also like put into somewhere uh, in the hot OSM uh, image request repo. Uh, so we added that, and this is just an example of how uh, we learn from ourselves uh, and try to engage that with the with the broader community so that like everyone is on the same page. And the work that someone needs to be done, like he has all the information that he needs. Uh, I guess you all can relate to this. Uh, while working as remote mappers, the only sometime resource that we have is imagery. Uh, we know we don't know that place. Uh, we don't know. We don't have mapillary there. Sometimes it's rare that you find a lot of <coughs> ground workers who will be able to justify, uh, who will be able to verify what you have been adding. So image is by far like some, sometimes our only tool or sometimes our only weapon that we can use against uh, uh, 
uh, here. Uh, and uh, it's difficult at certain times to get imagery as soon as possible uh, because there's a lot of factor. There's a factor of cost. There's a factor of availability. Uh, and, and that all comes in the picture. Uh, we try to focus as much as possible to bring as good imagery uh, where you can definitely see the features uh, that you need to identify, uh, which is recent because that is one of the main priority uh, in these hot tasks. At the same time, like covers the whole area uh, without clouds uh, and without any, any kind of like imagery uh, uh, error. Uh, these are the few examples. I put some of them from our blog where we have engaged uh, with the current uh, work of, of, of some of the NGOs and some of the working groups that have been using uh, HOT and uh, our imagery, uh, specifically in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, this is somewhere we helped uh, uh, the community to identify potential uh, places which can get flooded in Kanto, Vietnam. Uh, there's a lot of imagery that we put on in Cameroon and that has helped, uh, helped to map uh, uh, a lot of features which were not present. Uh, a lot of refugees moved and there was a big base camp somewhere in France and that was not available and that was not like you cannot see that in any of the imagery, so we needed like something as recent as possible. So we tried to like pull up imagery from Digital Globe that is like for the last month when this request uh, came up. Uh, this is something that shows our pipeline capability. Uh, we have a tool called uh, Landsat Live uh, that tries to have uh, the as recent map as possible from the Landsat uh, satellite series. And, and, and there's certainly like some of the very uh, prominent things that you can observe, like wildfire from the satellites. Uh, it has a very coarser resolution of 15 meter, uh, which is not gonna, good enough sometimes to identify roads, identify buildings. Uh, but in certain cases, it becomes important when you want to see the, uh, the depth or like the impact of, uh, of some of the, the events that happened. Uh, so in the past, we have been helping HOT when there's a disaster, this, uh, there's a disaster activation and there's a need of imagery. Uh, but during this whole time, we were thinking that uh, how can that be converted from a post response to a preparedness? Uh, you don't want to always respond, but like it's, it's always good to be prepared for these kind of uh, impact so that like we are already like ready to tackle them. Uh, so we thought of how can we identify them, how can we identify these places. The world is a big place. Uh, we cannot have good imagery everywhere in the world. Uh, but if we, if we focus on like how can we identify the places which needs them, uh, which, have, which are vulnerable, so we can identify them. So we just did a small kind of like exercise uh, where we identified uh, where are the global hot task cars and like very obvious, like most of them were somewhere in like uh, Africa. Uh, this is uh, due to the, the, the Nepal earthquake. Uh, and very rarely you see hot tasks around, uh, around the developed country. Uh, so like that gives us uh, a window of places where we want to identify, where we want to update imagery. Uh, among these places, uh, we search for cities that are big enough uh, that are capital and at the same time that has like previous engagement with any of the hot task. Uh, we try to identify them and with, with that help we were able to like update our imagery recently like in a lot of cities uh, which are potentially we think like could be a good place to start. Uh, of course this is something that is not complete. Uh, there's a lot of things that right now we can include. Uh, we can include like uh, potential reports or potential places identified by the various organization and include that in our later process. But just for a start, uh, I guess like that was a good start for us to identify city, cities, uh, places where we have like missing imagery. Uh, we also looked in what is available right now in Mapbox imagery at the same time Bing because Bing is officially like one of the main imagery that has been used by HOT and OSM. Uh, and we found out that a lot of these places, their imagery holes, uh, the imagery is quite old, like six or seven years ago. Uh, 
and it's just blurry sometimes. Uh, and we want to identify, uh, and we want to like search for uh, the possible uh, replacement for these. Uh, with our with our friends at Digital Globe, we were able to identify like some of the recent images at most of these places. Uh, so that's now right now in Mapbox, and like I hope like that helps a lot uh, here in these cities. Uh, these are the few examples: uh, Latin America, uh, Middle America, <coughs> and these three are from uh, uh, the Africa continent. Uh, so this sums up about 66,000 square kilometer of image that we updated so far uh, as part of like our, com uh, our commitment to HOT. Uh, this is not the end. This is certainly a good start. Now we have a good point. <coughs> like Now we know that where are the places we want to identify, what is the procedure, uh, how well the image serves, uh, how important that becomes. And that gives us a head start on maybe our later on engagement uh, with more hot tasks. Uh, with, with space, there comes a lot of challenges. Uh, and uh, this was the recent Worldview launch delayed. Uh, I was there in San Francisco when like just before 12 minutes, like they told us that it's not going to happen. Uh, because like it's difficult, like just a small leakage in the, uh, in the rocket uh, delayed this, uh, this satellite for like, I don't know, like maybe next week or something. Uh, and that's an important factor. Like these are uh, billion dollar equipments that need to be, that's, that, that are just difficult to make, uh, that are just difficult to send to the orbit. Uh, and sometimes for those, for satellites to even capture image, it's also difficult. Uh, 70, more than half of the, the world is like at a particular moment is covered with clouds. Uh, half of the world is already dark because of the night. 70% uh, of that is sea. Uh, and you have this, this satellite not at the correct position. That brings us to a very small window of what we get from these images. And we want to use as, as best as possible. Uh, the cost also becomes a lot of uh, a lot like big factor. Uh, so right now our focus is to identify places where we can strategically uh, improve our map and that can help hot as well as us as well as like OpenStreetMap. Uh, how can you get involved? Uh, of course, like if you want to get engaged, uh, get involved in mapping activities, you can uh, just look into uh, our mapping repo. Uh, we always try to focus uh, our mapping take it such that uh, anyone can join in. Uh, it's easy for people to come in and join in. Uh, we always appreciate people who are willing to help on translations. Uh, that's actually something that uh, like everyone should, should do. Like since now HOT is over like in, in many parts of the world and like we have members in like all the countries speaking different languages. Uh, this is certainly one of the key points that can help uh, make HOT uh, a more better, uh, give HOT a more better audience. Uh, and of course, like if you want to understand how you can use Mapbox tools, uh, you can visit this uh, URL and you'll have like all the information. Uh, you can reach out in case of any of the disaster where uh, you think that image, the current image provided uh, by uh, our service or as all by Bing is not sufficient and it's a big of urgent and we'll do our best to like uh, provide that what's possible. Uh, thank you, this is our office in Bangalore and uh, this is our front door. Uh, and I guess like I really put this picture just because to show that how much we like hot. Uh, <laughs> we made this last December, but it stayed for quite a lot of time. I, 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 I still think it's, it's still there. Uh, and uh, sometimes I feel that we are, we are part of Mapbox. We are working for as, uh, uh, as Mapbox mappers. That's why we are engaged to in, in, in the hot activities. Uh, but when you see, when you talk to folks, even on their weekends, even when they are not actually part of Mapbox working hours, they'll always like try to contribute. I know a lot of folks uh, in Mapbox who are not part of the data team. But still, like whenever I ask them, like, hey, when do you contribute to OpenStreetMap? They're like a hot task. Uh, so this is, I, I guess, like this is one of the inspiring thing, uh, and uh, really good to be part of such a team. And thank you. Uh, 
you have any questions? Yes, sir. I was, uh, uh, it's really helpful also that you analyze where the old paths are, that you make an entry available. And uh, perhaps you showed the city of Porto Novo, and actually, with the Netherlands reports, we almost finished that city. And I, I guess through that activity, you now see, okay, this is a city we're going to provide some street, but of course, for us, it's a little late because we almost finished the whole thing. So that process is interesting. Like, how can we, even if we're going to automatically analyze, Uh, I guess like that goes with like a bit of both. Uh, if like current community actually reach out to us, that gives us a better perception of, okay, these are the people who are actually going to use our image. Uh, and that's something you cannot detect some like by automation. Like you can just like say that, okay, this is a hole in the image. This is uh, where the image is old. Uh, this is where the image is blurry. But you can't say that that image is going to be used by people. It's going to be used by hot members. And here, the balance of both of them comes. Like, we can identify the places, but then it's also important that that image is used by someone. Uh, and this is where the involvement of people like comes up. Uh, and that's why sometimes the priority, even if we identify places where we don't have image, uh, we give big, give a uh, bigger priority to the request that we receive from uh, some of the working groups. Uh, so I guess like to answer the question, like a bit of both, uh, it would be really nice to have like these kind of feedbacks from people that can say that, oh, your image is old, uh, Bing is not there, and we don't have anything. So like we can proactively working on that request. Uh, but then again, like. If there is no community, then the only way that you can improve the imagery and the map is through like detecting that by the, the machines. Just to add towards the feed session, I think there are two ways to request for imagery if there's a need. Uh, one is the hot uh, imagery request repository, so if you create a ticket, um, one of us or one of the folks in the community will definitely take a look. Um, the second is Mapbox has a imagery request page where you can like drop it in and say, okay, the imagery. Uh, most of the time, what you see in Mapbox, a large part of that comes from Digital Globe. And we have our friends there from Digital Globe who has been like very supportive. Uh, they have always helped us and like proactively uh, been part of our engagement with HOT. Uh, so I guess that's not an issue so far. Uh, and uh, like right now, that's going very well with us. Uh, and they have been helping us a lot. So yeah, big shout out to you. Oh, thanks. I'll just add that. So I'm Kevin from Digital Globe. Good, good presentation. So everything that Digital Globe licensed to Mapbox is traceable and usable in OpenStreetMap, period. And that's something we partner with Mapbox on to provide. Uh, furthermore, it, during Nepal, during Ecuador, we published imagery with Creative Commons version zero license which means do whatever you want with it, we don't care. Um, you don't even need to attribute us. So those are just two examples of how, I can only speak for digital code, obviously, but there's other major providers out there, but um, I would say we're leaning forward as much as we can in terms of licensing to make sure hot communities can use our imagery for their purposes. Yes, sir. I have a related question. So sometimes governments buy imagery in this case from working with They are pretty much under the impression that we can trace all this so that we can use it, but I don't think that that's the case. So how is this, what's the triangle between this club and hot slash mapbox and what documents buy and want to make available to the Unitarian community in that country? And how can we use it? Can we, can we use it or what needs to happen? So what I would 
I'd say is um, every government sort of has unique requirements, and some governments don't even know about open street map. Um, and so when they're licensing data, they don't have that in mind and haven't explicitly said we are going to be using free for open street map. In that case, it's a gray area, and we need to ask a few questions. Um, but we sort of, what we did with Mapbox is we said, listen, there's 250 countries and sovereignties around the world. We can't manage them all. So let's just make sure our partnership just plows through any uncertainty. And so we've been very open and explicit about how the imagery we're providing Mapbox is, 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 is able to be used in OpenStreetMap. So the first part of your question I can't really answer. The second part is uh, anything you see on Mapbox satellite Thank you.